So this is going to be a quick run through, partial run through of the uh, in class four. So again, uh, it's going to be a standard project, a Windows Forms project. And I'll call it grade calc. Now, good practice to rename the form. I call it grade. I'll stick with grade calc because that's what I call the project. Not that it matters. And yes, I'm gonna re. It's gonna refactor this to uh, change all the references to form one to the new name. Okay. okay. Change the caption text. Okay, there we go. Now, uh, what we want is we want to have uh, several uh, text box that will allow uh, the user to input uh, grades. Uh, we had talked whether or not we should allow decimals or or not. Uh, for now, we can allow integers. That's fine. Uh, what it would impact is is whether or not how you have to convert it over. We're going to use check boxes to indicate whether or not we want to include that as part of the grade. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, throw down uh, a label. And we can go ahead and continue using the Hungarian notation. Again, not really expected to use it uh, on regular variable names, but for form names, you can use UI or LBL uh, to help group those together. Right okay. now. Change that text. Maybe I call it test one, maybe. All right. Then I'll want a uh, text box. Again, I can continue to use the, uh, the alignment tools to help me make th everything look nice. Right. And so now I need several of these. see I can copy multiple groups of controls pretty easily here now what what it what it's not going to do is it's not going to uh, have very nice naming conventions um, so uh, you know it, it's probably appropriate to go and again you can see that the this is Oops. Doing really good there. LBL grade two. Okay. Okay. So, um, and then change that to two. Five. Right. So we go up here and 
Now, if I were to try to leave it to, it's not going to actually let me leave it at 2 because I already have something called LBL grade 2. Um, we can't have conflicting variable names. Uh, then it wouldn't know which one, right? It would not know which one you were interested in uh, using. So it has to distinguish them, so you have to have unique variable names in, in a scope. So where am I? I am at. is there. Good. Okay. And of course I've renamed this TXT grade. And one thing you'll notice is that when the properties are up and I switch between uh, different items, it actually maintains the same position in the properties box, which for something like this can be quite convenient. You know, because I'm going to be right on the uh, the text box uh, name, right? Four. And five. So now I have uh, all the inputs I need. Uh, I need some checks box now, right? And so. Um, again, I'll I'm going to use uh, include instead of exclude, uh, and the reason I'll do that, and you'll you'll see why in a second, is that it will be easier for me to handle empty check boxes. If I don't include them, I just have to ignore them. So that'll be a little more convenient. So I'm going to call this and again if I do this uh, if I change the text ahead of time when I go ahead and do my paste you know it'll already have that done for me and if I had been really slick I would have uh, done all three all three of these controls together right and then I could have pasted them initially at the beginning as a group which would have been a little faster I mean not a real rush but uh, so let's double check uh, so and I really shouldn't call call this um, include one right to distinguish it from the other check boxes so that uh, so I know which which score I'm I'm intending to include. Four, checkbox four, checkbox five. All right. So now I have uh, most of the things I want on the GUI. Right. I still need uh, a button. Right. Let's just and I'll use CMD. And then I'll change the text. Something along those lines. Uh, now I'm going to need a couple labels. Right. And, and I'm going to want to change the Change this to maybe an auto size. Right. So 
uh, actually remove the auto size so that uh, I'll make the, the two similar. I'm going to change the, um, let's change the border so it's a little easier to distinguish that uh, where the text is. Not going to mess around too much. You know, I can go in here and change the change the back color. Right. And one one other way to do this is I could change this to a text box. I could have text box, um, and uh, make it uh, not updatable by the by the user. That's uh, perfectly sound. So you know, I'm gonna. Um, Number, number grade, number grade, something along those lines, um, and I probably want to get rid of the text that's currently in there, so that there's no confusion about that. Now, I probably should also label those. I'm not going to right this second, but I should probably put a little label like letter average, right? Okay, so now I have the basics of what I want on the form. And now I'm, I'm going to have to actually calculate the average, right? So it's good to do these in steps. So first thing, of course, uh, I have my button. And I'll double click, which will generate that uh, event handler for the button click. And now I can actually update it, right? So the first thing, why don't I just make sure that uh, I can update the, the label of the number grade. Right? So I'll just make sure that I know how to actually get something printed out. And again, uh, when you first start coding, it's always good to, to, to do small chunks of code. Right? Eventually, of course, we're going to have an actual calculated grade. But let's go ahead and just see if this works. So it'll give us a chance to make sure that there's no problems with this code and give us a compile and then we can hit calculate and we see it puts test and letter grade in there, right? So good enough for now. Uh, you can see they're not quite the right size, right? So, you know, that'll give us an indication do we need to resize those, uh, make these a little bigger maybe, you know, right? Now the the letter it probably won't have to be much longer than that. Okay, so now we've 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 gotten some output to the user. It's just some dummy output. Now we actually want to calculate the grades. So we're going to want uh, we're going to want a sum to store up all the uh, values. So we'll initialize that to zero, and then we're going to want. Uh, eventually, we'll have. You know, an, an average. And again, I'll initial it to zero. Uh, and now for the sum, what I'm what I'm going to want to do is only if the corresponding checks box is checked. And again, because I'm using my uh, uh, my Hungarian notation. Let's see, yeah, check box. Should be visible. Oh, what am I doing wrong here? Let's take a look. CK, uh, CKB. That's I'm probably using the wrong uh, Hungarian. But so one. And uh, if you want, if you want the uh, the IntelliSense to come up, you can you can use Control Space Bar. That will bring up the list. Sometimes it doesn't come up automatically, and we'll check to see if it's. Checked, and remember this is this is a boolean value, so that's all I need for that, right? So if this bool if it's checked, I'm going to go ahead and make the sum. I'm going to use the plus equals, which is the same thing as sum equals sum plus something. Uh, so I will say uh, 
that the uh, I'm going to use the convert method, which we've seen before, and I'm going to do I'm going to assume that they're giving me a a 32-bit uh, integer, and the I want the um, grade one, right? Now, if they don't have anything entered in there, and they this would crash this, right? And and we could use a a, uh, a try catch block to handle that. We're not going to worry about that right now. But what I can do is pretty much the same for all of those. So this will be 2, right? And then I'll change this also to 2. Oh, I've made a mistake here, though, because uh, this is, is this the text that I want to convert? No. This is merely the, that's a text box. I need to actually make sure that I specify the property text. So I have to specify which property I want. Um, and this is string information, remember. And, and of course, that's why we need to use the convert, because uh, the string, we can't, we can concatenate a string to, to a number. But we actually want to do uh, numerical addition. So we have to. We have to actually uh, convert it over, and there's more than one way to do that. Um, let's see. So how many do I have here? I got two. Let's see, two, and this will be three, and this will be three, and this will be four, and this will be four, and this will be. Five, and this would be five. All right. So now I get down here, and um, so for now I'm going to not worry about the letter grade. That's going to take some more work, right? But this now I have the sum, and I want to divide by. What do I want to divide by? Five. Is that right? A couple problems here. One, of course, this is going to return a number, right? Um, non string delegate. Um, well, we'll skip that for now. Because I'm going to have to convert it over to a string, right? Just to save it as a text. But I have another problem is that this this is not necessarily five. Um, so I also need to to have the count, right? Because I want to my average should be based on the number of items that I actually include. So I can use plus plus, which will increment the count. That's another way and that basically this is count equals count plus one it's the same thing it's just kind of a shorthand for that because you'll see this in loops when we get to them it happens often uh, where you're just incrementing in the loop so if this checkbox is checked I will add to it the cur the value of that text box converted to a number and I also increment this count so now instead of dividing by 5, I will divide by the count. Right? But I still have a problem. And I actually had set this up here that I want the average. right? So let's do this. We'll change this so that I actually calculate the average before I get down here to the text. right? And now what I want this text to be is that average. Now, what kind of number is average? Right. Well, if you don't remember, you can always go back and look. And it was an integer, 
Now that, that raises a question. Do I want it to be an integer or do I want it to be a double? Well, it's possible that, that I might shortchange you on your grade if I make it an integer. So now this raises another problem, though, because here, if these two are integers, then when I go to divide, it will return an integer. So I actually, if I want this to come out to be a double, the average to be a double, then I really need to take one of these up here and also make it a double. I can make the sum a double. That's fine. Now, it doesn't mean that um, these here have to be doubles. Because remember that a double can accept a lower precision integer without needing to be converted over. All right. So we'll leave letter grade because we have lots more work to do to get that to work. But let's see how we did so far. Right. Now, if we don't check any of these boxes and hit calculate average, what's, what's count going to be? Well, it'll mean that count never increases, and therefore we're going to get divide by zero error. But we won't worry about it too much. You can see. Ooh, that's it. Not a number. See? Not a number. Actually, if it was integers, it would have given us a, a divide by zero error. But because it's uh, a double, it's going to give us not a number, uh, which your user probably would not like. Uh, so let's go, you know, 90 and we'll include this in the average. Now, I suggest that when you're testing, it's always good to test a very simple case, like 90, something you know. If I put 90 here, what, what should the average be? It should be 90, that's right. Now, uh, if I continue and I go 90 again and include that, then the average should still be 90. Good. Now let's choose something I can also calculate. I'll change this one to 100, and I'll calculate, and the average should be 95. There we go. So it's always good when you're doing your preliminary testing to use nice numbers that you can really figure out quickly whether or not it's doing what you expect. Uh, so now we've got the, the average working, and now we want to have a letter grade. So to get the appropriate letter grade, uh, we need to take uh, our average and test it with conditionals. There are more than one way to do this, but I'm, we're going to use conditionals because that's what we know so far. So if the average is greater than 90, what should I do? I should say that you got a what? Okay. Now I'm going to need to get rid of this one because if I don't, it'll run this code and then right after it, overwrite it with that code, which would eliminate all our hard work. All right. So now um, I have some choices. I can do ifs, I can do else ifs. Um, now, how many of these should, how many different letter grades should you post? So how many different possibilities are there? Well, it turns out, of course, that only one of these should run. So I should do an else if. If I do an else if, it means if this runs, it won't run anything below it, which is what we want. Now we'll do greater than 80, and we'll say that's a B, and then... We'll say, right, we'll say 70, greater than 70 is a C, greater than 60 is a D. So if you're not greater than 60, we can do the else, right? And that will provide us with the final option, right? which um, would be your F, right? And no one's going to get one of those. Whoops. Mistyped here. Right. 
So now, based on the average, it should populate the, the box, right? So again, when you're doing this, uh, go ahead and choose numbers that are easy, right? I'll include that. If I get a 90, what do you expect? Well, I know what I expect. I expect a, a B, actually, because I wrote the code. Uh, now, is that what you expected as a student, though? So think about it for a second. Let's go back and look at our code. And why did it, why is it, it is because we have not included 90. 90 is actually, uh, it's got to be greater than. So if we want to include 90, we need to say greater than or equal to, which I'm sure you would prefer. If you got a 90, you'd be like, yeah, that's pretty close, isn't it? I should get an A. So we'll go ahead and change these to greater than, equal to. So it's important to notice these subtle differences will really make a difference. Uh, someone could go from an A to a B, depending on how you decide to code it. Right, so let's go ahead again. 90, we'll include that in the average. There's the A, right? So then let's again try something very simple. We'll try 2. We expect this to come out to 95, and that should still come out to A, right? All right, good. Now we need to start to, uh, you know, move the average around a little bit. So if we do this, uh, 70, that's 30. That means the split between them is 15. That's 85. Calculate average. 85 is a B. So you should go down and try to fig test each one of these positions and try to make sure that given a specific uh, average it gives the correct letter grade and the other thing we want to note is it's important to test edge cases like you saw 90 that's right on the edge so we'd like to test something just above 90 right at 90 and just below 90. so when you start to do testing that's how you can ensure that your code is doing everything you always expect all right uh, so that's it for uh, your simple uh, grade calculator and uh, we'll go ahead and try to finish this up in class on Monday. Uh, and uh, if you get far enough, you can try to implement preventing people from entering anything but, uh, but you know, numerical data there, which I showed you on the last video. All right, so that's it. I will see you on Monday.